Delicious, meat nutritious, and the snack that packs a real protein punch, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving has six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value and making wonderful pistachios one of the highest protein nuts out there. But perhaps more than that, I love all of the flavors they have. Their sea salt and vinegar ones are my favorite when I'm craving that flavor, but still want to keep it healthy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors like chili roasted, honey roasted, smoky barbecue, and jalapeno lime, to name a few. Perfect for enjoying with family or friends and taking them with you on the go. Whether you're a pistachio purist who loves cracking open every nut, or you prefer the convenience of no-shells pistachios, Wonderful Pistachios has got you covered. Grab Wonderful Pistachios and elevate your snacking game today. So fill up with a healthy snack when hunger strikes. Visit wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more. That's wonderfulpistachios.com. Before we start, please check out our new podcast, Good Sleep. Have you ever noticed how a calm mind can really set the stage for a good night's sleep? That's the idea behind our new podcast, Good Sleep. Greg, our host from Optimal Relationships Daily, is here to help ease you into a peaceful night's rest with some positive affirmations. And these affirmations aren't just comforting, they can help ease anxiety and nurture positive thoughts, setting you up for true good sleep. So press play on good sleep tonight because a good tomorrow starts with a good night's sleep. Just search for good sleep in your podcast app and be sure to pick the one from Optimal Living Daily. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3181, Understanding and Overcoming Procrastination by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator. Uh, My voice is kind of coming back, so hopefully I can get through this blog post. I'm sharing an article today that's covering probably one of the most frequently asked about topics, procrastination. So with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Understanding and Overcoming Procrastination by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. Honey, did you Venmo the gardener? Oh, I meant to, but forgot. Did you remember to call that new client? Yeah, but I didn't get to it. Hey, did you get that paper done? Mom, stop bugging me. I had to go to practice and was tired. These are conversations we have every day, sometimes with a child, with a partner, with a coworker, or with ourselves. Procrastination, or putting something off in the present with the intention of tackling it later, is a common problem, believe it or not, especially for perfectionists. A quick fix for normal procrastination. If someone says, yeah, I didn't get to that, and the words are accompanied by a quick laugh, they're probably admitting to not being motivated to get an unpleasant or difficult thing done. Usually, fixing it isn't too hard. You can either give yourself an award for the desired behavior, or you can pair an undesired consequence with your procrastination so that you get punished. Here's an example of number one. I needed to study for the GRE. Now, I'm not good at standardized tests and absolutely dreaded taking it again. I was also a huge soap opera fan, specifically All My Children. The tumultuous lives of the spicy characters was a delicious distraction from real life for me, so I conceived a plan for motivation. I made myself swear that I could watch one recorded episode for every hour I spent slaving over the study material. It worked, and I scored high enough to get into grad school. The rest is history. A friend's story is an example of the second option. The problem was that she kept putting off the chore of weeding her garden until it became so overgrown, sometimes it would take an entire weekend to get it back into shape. So she didn't want to choose that punishment. So her belief became, it's silly, it takes me way less time to pop out for a few minutes in the morning than the times when I really let it go and have to dedicate a day or two to catching up. Common sense, right? These are the everyday, garden variety, pun intended, types of procrastinations that can be a part of being a human. Yet procrastination can take on a more ominous place in your everyday life. You might be absolutely paralyzed by anxiety when facing an action that, for some reason, perhaps unknown to you, seems overwhelming. 
you need to make a decision or choose to take a risk, yet you can't seem to move off square one. When procrastination is no longer manageable or funny. These procrastinations aren't a laughing matter. Instead, you feel humiliated by how insignificant your fears seem and chastise yourself. I don't know why I can't do this. Everybody can do this. Sarah can't open her email for fear that there will be bad news. Jason can't begin a paper for his college class because it feels overwhelming. Chandra won't go to the gym because she dreads not knowing how to work the machines. Alex can't order food at a drive-thru because she's too anxious that she'd sound silly. Shame washes over you every time you freeze. You might think that procrastinators' lives aren't productive or successful. However, the four previous examples are all from people I worked with who had great careers, wonderful families. What existed were pockets of anxiety, certain things that overwhelmed them. They might have a panic attack when trying to confront those things, which then developed into panic about panic, meaning the fear about panicking was far worse than their initial panic. So why do you procrastinate? Is it avoidance, as in post-traumatic stress disorder? Sarah had had trouble with the IRS due to not paying her taxes for several years. Her fear about opening mail was completely connected with that emotional trauma which was re-triggered when official-looking envelopes arrived. She wasn't simply putting things off. She hadn't fought in a war, but for her, those couple of years had been highly traumatizing. Is it attention deficit disorder? The field of ADD is immense, and I'm not an expert in it, but people with ADD and ADHD have neurological differences that cause them to severely struggle with focus. Jason's apparent procrastination was more about focus. People with focusing problems can get lost in what seem to others simply organizational processes, and shame leads them to problems with self-worth. Is it the consequence of helicopter or abusive parenting? If things were done for you as a child or even as an adult child, You may not have learned how to organize your own thinking, prioritize your own choices, or navigate small or large failures. If you had a helicopter parent, you may have learned, even if I don't do it, it still gets done. Chandra hadn't been allowed to make mistakes because her parent accomplished those unfamiliar to you tasks for her. However, this deprived her of the opportunity to problem solve and develop her own sense of self-competence. She'd never been allowed to navigate unfamiliar territory, and so the unknown, or looking stupid, was terrifying. In more extreme dynamics, if you were abused as a child or very heavily criticized, you can also develop the tendency to stay invisible. You fear making a mistake or looking like you don't know something, and it can paralyze you. Is it perfectionism, worry, self-doubt, or anxiety? Alex, who had a bad problem with procrastination, also suffered from huge insecurities. She didn't know how to expect anything but perfectionism from herself, and yet was also terrified of looking or sounding as if she wasn't in perfect control. Knowing what's underneath procrastination can lead to different treatments. If it's past trauma, then trauma-related work needs to occur, whether that's EMDR or some other kind of trauma work. If it's a focusing issue, then techniques like biofeedback or neurofeedback might be helpful, or medication is a possibility. If it's a product of poor or abusive parenting, there may be an underlying depression that needs to be addressed. If it's mainly anxiety, then calming techniques such as mindfulness or meditation could be useful Hypnosis is a possibility, cognitive work challenging those irrational thoughts, and regular exercise could also be helpful. Confront your shame, show compassion for yourself as you acknowledge your vulnerability, and then begin to unravel the how and why of your procrastination. And you'll get that paper done. You'll order that chicken sandwich. You'll open your mail. Most importantly, you'll enjoy so much more freedom. 
You just listened to the post titled Understanding and Overcoming Procrastination by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. Thank you to Dr. Margaret. Again, this is a topic that is frequently asked about, so hopefully it was helpful for you. I'm definitely guilty of this from time to time, especially in the past. Like in school, I was always waiting to the last minute to start projects and papers. I'm not sure what the cause was back then, but I can see the value in digging in and asking why. Awareness is the only way we can resolve that issue because first we need to see that we're procrastinating in the first place, so awareness of the issue itself. But then awareness of what's causing it can help us find the right solution instead of just throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks. So for me, for example, I don't think it's an intention problem, so trying a bunch of biofeedback or neurofeedback techniques or medication might not be helpful, well, and in fact, could be harmful. So that's why it's important. Maybe you know yours, maybe you don't, but I'm sure with a little investigation, you'll be able to figure it out. So do think about that today, and I'll do the same. Have a great rest of your day and middle of the week, and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.